Hello everyone, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3 5th Edition Edition Solo Runs. Last time, Lurch managed to take on a party of five using some strategically placed void bulbs and explosions, and now we have the key to the heavy oak doors, and we can see what lays beyond. Armed scribes, but no sign of a struggle. So... Having done this before, I know what lies ahead. And the question becomes, is it too metagamey to kind of put all of the foes in a big heap so that they're a much easier fight when they all wake up from the dead? Because that's kind of what you would like to see, rather than having to have five or six foes attacking you from all angles when all you have is a short bow and a sword, if you could just drag all the foes into a pile, can we even move corpses? Can we like pick them up and shove them or, oh, we can throw them. Yeah. And they take damage as objects when they're dead, which is hilarious. But I don't think we have any capacity for just kind of destroying them more as corpses. We can just kind of keep attacking them, but no matter what happens, I think in a moment they will raise from the dead. So we can throw them. The question is, should we? Because what I really don't know is how we're going to survive this encounter using standard rules. You could say that maybe Lurch is an experienced fighter who knows about the risks of the undead in tombs and so is paranoid and puts them all into a pile so that he can kill them more efficiently should they wake from the dead. That's Jurgle, scribe of the dead. I didn't think anyone still worshipped him. Well, aren't we just an intelligent fighter? So there's the main chamber. And here is the area to get into there. Although, oh, okay. Curious. I was going to say, if we don't see this button, I have no idea how the rest of the encounter would go, if it could go at all. So, wait, is that? Oh, no, I thought that was part of a sword, but it's uh, part of a flag that's hidden inside of that geometry. Uh let me know in the comments, do you think, because we're working alone, we should be allowed to kind of make ourselves theoretically paranoid and thus slightly metagame because it's just us versus everybody else? Or should we play it as if we are a complete unknown to the world? Because I think on this occasion... I'm going to allow myself the privilege of having them all bound together in the same space. But let me know if you guys think that's too cheesy. We'll prevent it from happening in future occasions. But for right now, let's just throw this guy overboard as well. It does help that we are super strong. It's the first time I've ever had a character that actually has a real strength stat. Well, that's not going well. And they might have clipped through the floor ever so slightly. Right, last one. Okay, and what supplies do we have to make this fight slightly easier? Again, we don't have spell casting yet, so we can't use any of these scrolls. We do have a fresh caustic bulb. We have one more spiked bulb, although I'm not sure. I think the undead are probably immune to bleeding, so that's probably not going to help us out all that much extra. Uh, we have an acid arrow, and we have basic poison. I think undead might be immune to the poison condition as well, so... 
those aren't going to help us too much. But hey, we won't know until we try. And worst comes to worst, we can always try and retreat. Already, I'm trying to right-click to rotate the camera because that's what it is in Solasta. And the ever-so-slight subtleties of the difference between one and the other are going to start plaguing my brain soon, I'm sure. Right, let's push the button. Yep, that's a bad time. Something just woke up. All right, we're top of the initiative, which is good. We've got one, two, three, four foes. I'm not sure where the fifth is. Okay, there's like two on top. Oh, there's two on top of each other right there. So these are throw as an action. And jumping is a bonus action. So get me up here, please. And then we will throw. Let's shoot the acid arrow. No, let's throw the caustic bulb. I changed my mind. And we'll just kind of throw it at one of them. I don't know if it will make contact damage, but the acid splash will certainly hurt them. Let's go for the one closest to us, because then more people have to move through the acid splash, I think. Alright, they have 10 HP. It's not heaps. I'm not going to action surge yet, so we just have the last of our movement. With that, I'm just going to kind of try and get behind this pillar slightly. And let's see how terribly this goes. That's a magic missile. All right. So far, so not dead. What I want to do is more splash damage to these guys. But the spiked bulb, I think, is not going to do it for us. Would the Void Bulb pull them? It will pull them, but it's not going to pull them close enough to get to the acid. They're too far away from that now, for the most part, I think. But hey, let's give this a go. Yeah, they took some light damage, but not heaps of the stuff. If we can get the majority of the scribes down, killing the entombed warrior then just becomes a 1v1, which I think we should be able to manage. We are going to second wind at this point. Three whole HP. Oh boy. And let's give ourselves some more distance. Put ourselves here and turn to face them. We might be able to do some splash damage with our acid arrow after this resolves. That's a good miss. And that's a good save. Now we are saving like a beast. I don't know what the death rattle was, but so far so good. All 
Right, one down. Gonna drink a potion. That's much better. And we'll let them come to us here. Continuing our theme of good saves. There's the problem, child. We are out of our really good AoE stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and hack this one down. And then make some space between me and the entombed warrior. I think that's going to go all right for us. If we can get on the other side of this caustic brine and force them to move through it, that would be ideal. I'm not sure if it's flammable. should probably watch that. All right. And from here, we're not in an area of attack of opportunity. So I'm going to use my very high strength stat to leap right over to the other side of this caustic brine and then for a main attack action see if we can't get the last 6 HP of this guy down one whole damage alright we'll move back with our remaining speed One damage we can totally handle. They are smart enough to go around the brine. Oh, no, not all of them. Okay. Decisions need to be made. I think we are outside of attack of opportunity here. Feels a bit like chess. Right, we're going to try and take this guy out once again. And the crit will do it. Use the rest of our speed to escape. Turn and face the foe so that we don't have backstab inflicted against us. Alright, this is the warrior. And the entombed scribe is behind us. We can't reach the Entombed Scribe for a regular attack from here, but I still think we're not technically in a attack of opportunity area, because if you see his red circle doesn't have a red arrow pointing at us, so jumping away is still a bonus action rather than a full action disengage. So we can hop to here, attack this guy. Yeah. And then keep using our high speed to keep distance between us and the guy who can only attack us by melee. And this way we keep ourselves out of danger. Especially with our 35 foot movement speed. Now of course they could dash to get over to us, although they don't seem capable of it. So what I want to do is just get a couple of... a couple more hits with the bow in. And then we'll go to sword v sword combat. But I'm trying to get him down because one or two crits can still be the end of us. Although 16% to hit on this is terrible, so... Let's go in with the blade. And we will action surge if we need to. That's a big whiff. So let's take one more attack. Eight is good. That is an excellent miss. And that went much better than expected. 
I'll take the gold, leave the weapons. I'm going to try and stay outside of the brine and acid. And then we can see what's going on inside the tomb room. Alright, seems like we got the stuff off of those guys prematurely before the fight. So we have opened this up. A lot of effort to hide one. We get our amulet of lost voices, which of course allows us to speak with dead. And then this large sarcophagus. Yeah, we've got the strength for this. We are a strong lad. So he has spoken, and so thou standest before me, right as always. What a curious way to awaken. Now, I have a question for thee. What is the worth of a single mortal's life? Uh, let's have a look. Quite the question. What's the reason for it? Nothing more. Wilt thou answer my question? Uh... Yes. So, I ask again. What is the worth of a single mortal life? Let's have a look. Well, we are doing a solo run. So the only life that matters is mine. At this particular junction, perhaps that is not so far from the truth. I mean, I gave you my answer. I guess otherwise it depends on who's who. I am curious by what standards thou shalt judge. Very well. I am satisfied. We have met, and I know thy face. We will see each other again at the proper time and place. Farewell. Well, glad to have gotten through that one without combat. And we have gold and jewels. Otherwise, that's everything down here. There is one more chamber down to the side. Just over here. We can loot this for what it's worth. And then that's the dank crypt all resolved, I think. And it's leading me like someone wanted to bury their secrets. Leading me to a soft sense of security, all of this going so well so far. With such a massive log. Uh, strength. It's always gonna be strength. Smash it. No oh dear. The impact reverberates through your body. As if you just slammed a hammer into solid adamantine. The lock doesn't budge. Uh, well, we can try Arcana. I don't expect it to go any better than the strength did. Yeah, should have known. The tome does not take kindly to your tampering. A feeling like pins and needles lingers under your skin pricking and prodding that is unpleasant do we have a negative status effect because of that no well that book shall remain here I suppose however the treasures the treasures are mine I will leave the bones don't need bones so that's all of this stuff nowhere to go that way 
and just on the other side of this crypt there is a familiar little bit of beach over which there is a ladder or a rope some kind of escape mechanism there it is this will take us back to the trap door at the top that we had pondered about going through first but it was locked and we were unable to get through in that direction and here we are back up top at the chapel entrance uh, we looted that skeleton already because we did walk through here previously and we'll climb up here And that's going to be an excellent cutting off point for the session. Let's just see, how close are we to level 3 now? About halfway. So a few more encounters. And we should be able to get there, of course. The next encounter I think that we can expect to have is the very large one outside the gates of the Druid's Grove. And with that ahead of us... It will be quite the fight being down three in numbers. But until then, thank you ever so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please do consider subscribing or hitting that like button. It does mean a lot to me. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you are having a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.